Hey guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about misconceptions about the spawn. Not about whether or not it's right or wrong. We're going to talk about do you actually need clear water to catch bedfish? And if not, how do you do it in murky water? We're going to talk about moon phase. We're going to talk about, what else are we going to talk about? I don't know. We're going to talk about a lot. Apparently. A lot. Apparently. We're, going we're going to talk about where. Talk about species, spots, smallies, largemouth what they prefer, water temps. Uh, I guess we're just gonna ramble and see how it goes. That works. I mean, we all grew up reading Bassmaster. We already know what the book says about what the spawn is supposed to do. We know that we're looking for that water in the low to mid 60s. You're looking for a full moon. You're heading to the backs of pockets. That's easy. We don't need to talk about that. Let's talk about the stuff that the book doesn't tell you that is really, really important. Uh, let's talk, for starters, where do bass spawn besides where they're supposed to? Yeah, it seems like one thing we've found uh, now that we've been traveling the country a lot more, it seems like there isn't a correct answer to that. Right. It seems like everything varies per body of water and per species. You know, you head out to uh, the Bay of Green Bay and smallies want to spawn in a foot of water and sand. You head to... I don't know, where else? But some of our local lakes, they want nothing rock but rocks. Piles. They'll yeah. go out on humps. They go out on the ends of rocky outcrops. They are not in the pockets at all. Same with largemouth. You know, some largemouth are right where the book says they're going to be. They're right up in the dead back of the pocket in like three feet of water right in the middle, right where they should be. And then you go to another lake and you wonder why there's a fish rolling on its side on the prop of a boat out in the <laughs> deep end of a marina in 100 feet of water. See, bass don't necessarily follow the rules. So what we want to do is help you open your mind because a lot of you guys are headed into the spawn. A few of you are already there, but even the guys that were on the spawn two months ago, you still got waves of fish coming. So this applies to everybody. You want to go into the spawn this year very open-minded because you are going to be more effective and you are going to catch bigger fish. This video is not about baits. This isn't about Go flip a bubblegum Senko and catch more fish. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about you need to open up your eyes, especially if you're on a lake. The one thing I've noticed is if you're on a lake with a really high population of fish, some lakes, if there's just a handful of fish in the lake, they seem to behave by the book, if you will. But the more fish that are in there, they start getting pushed out because a huge wave of fish will come in and they don't all fit. And that's when you start to see the interesting thing. So some of the stuff I've noticed is that if I've been on a bank before, outside of the spawn, and I know that there's trash on the bottom, whether that's a tire or a lay down tree or a Doritos bag, it does not matter. Fish, for whatever reason, build their nests on the things that are different, They're different yeah. every stinking time. So if you have already fished the shoreline, it's your home lake, and you know where the strange pieces of cover are, you don't even have to pull up and look at them. Cast to those areas because the fish will not be in between them. They will be right on that garbage on the bottom every time. That's one that stands out to me. Yeah, chairs, all sorts of things. All sorts anything, of stuff. Anything is different. And uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the bottom. I've seen fish spawn on bridge pilings. Yep. I've seen fish spawn on like uh, dock, dock pilings. Uh, on under the of a tree. Yeah, I mean all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be the bottom um, and I don't, I don't know it just keep an open mind That's the whole point of this video is you know if, if if you have a lake where it's not clear and you can't sight fish They're still spawning So if you're flipping in there and you feel like you're getting a bluegill bite or you keep getting short struck Keep coming back with tails you flip in there again tails missing again. Those are spawning fish You don't necessarily have to see the fish to catch them uh, go out a little bit deeper, throw a bigger bait. You can catch the fish transitioning, coming in. That's right. Um, I think you just nailed it. I mean, you, you hit it quick, but you absolutely nailed it. You, in, in the springtime, you need a really good set of glasses. And we've talked about that before. We both wear ambers. That, and we'll link the glasses that we wear. They're not expensive. You have to have that so that when you're just fishing, you're not even sight fishing, you're just fishing and something happens. A fish rolls or a fish comes out of shallow water you see them but too many guys get locked on that thought process of if i'm not sitting here 
looking at the fish on the bed and looking at my bait, I can't catch it. Uh, even good fishermen get caught up in that. They want to sit right on top of those fish and look down at them. You don't have to do that. You can hammer those fish blind casting. Tim just mentioned that murky water, that a couple of indicators that you flip into a spot and you just get that little short stripe, just a little bup, 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 like he said, like a bluegill, bup, bup, bup. That is oftentimes a male just picking up and getting that bait out of a bed, even though you can't see them, especially if it's up against a piece of cover. So if you have murky water, you just go along and pitch to the visible cover and feel for that short strike, a fish that'll pick a bait up and move it off and drop it. Or if you hook set and your tail's bit off and you go down eight more pilings or tules or grass clumps and hook set and your tail's bit off again. That's not random. Those are males sitting up on beds picking those baits up. So what you do is you assume it's a bed fish and you fire back to the exact same spot. And if it happens again, you set the hook and it's clipped off, put another bait on. You do that until you catch them. Once you catch them, I don't care if it's a two pounder or a five pounder, the first thing you do is throw in there again. Because if you could see, and you saw that a bed had a two pounder and a seven pounder sitting on it, and you caught the two pounder, would you make another cast? I would make another cast. So assume that the female is still up there and pitch in there another half dozen or a dozen times and see if you don't get bit again. Because even in muddy water, it will amaze you that you'll be fishing along, just doing your thing, catching little ones, and all of a sudden that light bulb goes off. Man, these are bedding fish. And the next time it happens, you pitch in there a second time, and out comes a six pounder. You've been blowing it the entire day, fishing sight fish, having no clue that these fish were actually up spawning. One thing I want, we could talk about too, and I don't know if you want to elaborate on it or not, but uh, fall spawns or spawn throughout the year. You know, right now we're talking springtime, right? Your springtime weather, shorts, flip flops, t-shirts, full moon, but a bass is a bass and they go through the motions quite a few months out of the year. That's true. And that is not in the books. <laughs> um, it has a lot to do with moon, length of day, and weather. And frankly, those three things are the indicator of the real spawn and false spawns. Uh, the biggest thing in there is the, the real spawn first. The assumption is that you're waiting for a water temperature around that 63 degree mark. You're waiting for that full moon and that's when those fish are gonna spawn. It just Well, the water temp depends on species. Absolutely, it does. But more importantly, take all that and throw it away. <laughs> because we have seen fish locked up on beds in the 40s, and we've seen them locked up on beds in the 80s. They just get up and do their thing, and it has a lot more to do, in my opinion, with length of day and time of year than it does with anything else. There are absolutely waves of fish that move on the full moon and the new moon, both of them. In the springtime, you if you have a choice, you want to be on the water during both of those periods because no question waves of fish move on both moons. But there are fish that move every day in between, and some of them are giant fish. And a lot of times those giant fish move early. So I don't care that the water temp is not in the 60s. If I have a warm afternoon and my water is in the 50s, I am going to get up and check. Because how many times have you noticed that when you get up to bed fish, you're like, oh my gosh, there's fish on beds. This is awesome. And you're all excited. You see and empty then, ones. <laughs> exactly. There's already empty beds. You totally blew it. Just like we did. We all do it. Because we're waiting for the perfect conditions and those fish have been going for weeks. Now on to the false spawn. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, like you said, we're talk we're in our mind, right? We're used to the weather, the the spring, we're used to just concentrating on the spring as the spawn, but really these fish, they go through the motions multiple months, multiple times a year throughout the year. There's been plenty of times where I've seen bed fish in the end of, you know, October, yeah. up shallow yeah, on the full moon. So the fall spawn is is pretty much their their natural reaction, their, their what's the word? Um, the way they're wired, right? The water temp's right, the moon's right, it doesn't really matter 
what month it is, they're still going to go through the motions. Maybe they can't produce eggs right, they or they don't. can't actually spawn, right. but they're still going to go through the whole motion and they're still going to come up shallow where you can see them. I remember years ago, 12, 14 years ago, one of my buddies caught a 15 pounder in October and told me it was a bed fish. And I thought he was out of his mind, but he wasn't. This fish was up defending a spot on the bottom in October. It had no eggs in it. It couldn't spawn, but the length of day was right. The moon was right. The weather was right. To the fish, it felt just like spring, just like spring. So it had come up and was going through the motions, even though it couldn't actually do the act. It was a true false spawn, but it is a thing. And it happens primarily around the big moons, because when you have those big waves on the big moons, during the false times of year, your best odds, again, are gonna be during when a big wave would happen. So it's typically around the big moons that you wanna look for it, but do not be surprised if June, July, September. September, October, you see a fish that is behaving like, like a bed fish. It is not just a spring thing. It's not common that you can pattern it, although it does happen. Sometimes it happens enough that you can go and run these false bed fish, but more often than not, it's gonna be one big one that's up there doing it. And a guy will have a tournament kicker and he's not telling you it was a September bed fish because he doesn't want everybody to think he's insane, but that's exactly what it was. Guys, we just want you to think differently this year. The spawn happens every year. You catch the same fish every year. Why don't you do something different this year and see if it doesn't produce a better result for you. Focus on those oddball areas. Everybody else is running pockets. Don't be the 18th guy to go into a pocket. Go check the tips of points. Go check the odd pieces of cover. When you're going in and out of the marina in the morning, look at the backs of the boats. It's going to surprise you where you see these fish and the size of these fish and, and when it's happening. I think we'll all shock you don't be that guy that finds those empty beds during prime time because those fish have already been going through the motion and you're going to have a lot better year. Yeah, another uh, real quickly, cables. For some reason, they like to spawn on cables out in the middle of the water, that out, out in the middle of the lake that are linking uh, marinas, boat docks, those sort of things. So anything that is different, anything that is hard, don't be afraid to go look at, guys. We appreciate the support. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. Remember to subscribe to the channel. And those of you guys have already subscribed, remember to turn on notifications, click that little bell up there, and uh, we appreciate you guys. We hope you guys have a good day. Thanks, guys.